Really bringing a lot of our production back to close to the home and for the home next year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Welcome to a windy Tappanoff farm here in Aberdeenshire, North East Scotland. We're definitely into autumn now with lots of autumnal colours, real drop in temperatures and it's been pretty wet recently. Things are getting pretty muddy underfoot. So we're just doing our best to try and crack on with everything that we need to do to feel ready for winter. So I've just been up checking on the geese on my rounds with the dog. We've had the geese in our new area of forest garden up at our canal pond. They were grazing the forest garden that we've planted to the north of the canal last week and now they're down in the southern half. They're doing a fantastic job at grazing down the grass um, and the buttercup and manuring the place as they go. I always feel like they're the cow of the poultry world. Almost solely eat grass and produce copious, copious amounts of manure. But it won't be long until they need moved on out of here and where they're going next. I'm not entirely sure. But I think they've got another couple of days worth of grazing left. They certainly enjoy using the ponds. They had access to the canal when they were grazing the northern side of the canal system. And now they've got access to this small round pond that we dug um, earlier in the spring. So I'm just going to head down to the market garden. We're going to be getting on with the tidying up job there. We're also going to be looking at uh, an area where we're going to be making a tree nursery which is very important because we've got some bare root trees coming which we'll need to get in the ground. We've also got our own trees that we've been growing these last few years which we want to move to a better site. So a bigger dedicated tree nursery is needed. So we'll take a look at our new future tree nursery site soon. I'm just coming up to the small polytunnel. I think Rosa's lurking around somewhere behind the tunnel. This was the original area of kitchen garden that was built when I first moved here to the farm in 2012. Behind the tunnel was an area devoted to growing food for the house, mostly because of its proximity to the house. If we're thinking about our zone planning within permaculture. The back of the house and the kitchen is not far away so this made up our zone one garden. 
and the polytunnel was put up to be able to grow crops for the house that uh, needed that extra protection in our northerly climate. This served as a kitchen garden for a number of years, really up until um, we made the market garden. Because of the market garden being our business and just the large amount of vegetables that we could grow over in the east field, the kitchen garden here really came out of use and hasn't been used really that much since about 2017. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Told you she was here. <laughs> just having a think. Yes, yeah. just having a think and a look around. Thinking about next year. Yeah, so yeah. next year. Well, I was just saying, a bit mm. of history on the kitchen garden. So, mm. kitchen garden established in 2012. Yeah. This was before Rosa and I met. I know, before I was around. Yeah, probably the last time the veg beds that were in here were cultivated was probably around 2017. Yeah, because that was just, you did a bit for the market garden. Yeah, we did salads. salads. and turnips. Yeah, and just stuff. a sort of extension of the market mm. garden. And then really 2018, the market garden took off and got much bigger and the business got bigger and made less sense to be over here basically. yeah and yeah. we couldn't we didn't have the time to be over here yeah yeah just bringing bringing seedlings over here and just mm -hmm. looking after it we just didn't find the time Watering it, weeding. with the size of the garden just full time over yeah. there yeah and then just last year we decided to make a few beds here um, into a tree nursery because we were taking a lot of cuttings and we wanted somewhere to put them and this is one of two kind of pop-up nurseries that we've had to make over the years, which is why we want to make a more Dedication. dedicated nursery. Yeah. We were able to dedicate some beds in here to being a nursery because we put a large silage sheet down here in about 2019 to try and stop the place turning into too much of a jungle because it is prime real estate. It's, you know, it's a nice little bit of land. It's got some great protection from the winds by these big hedges. It's got a south facing aspect, yeah. really close to the house. So we always kind of had it in the back of our minds that we might want to do something with this again, this area, and didn't want it to get too jungle-like. Um, that hasn't really <laughs> happened. It has become a bit of a jungle. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, I mean, that's part of the reason we really want to clear it up because it's something we see every day. We can see it out of the bathroom window in our house and it's so close to the house. I mean, you'd think it's zone one. It's the part of our, of our farm that we're meant to visit <laughs> a lot, but we weren't. So that's why it did get turn into a jungle. But it, it, I think every time you walk past it, you remember that that kind of doesn't make sense. So that's why, well, we're both really excited to, to get this back in action and just really look after it again. And so that's our news really, yeah. that we're excited to say that this is going to be a garden. Yeah. Again. A little one. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. We've decided that next year we're going to see if we can cultivate the majority of the quick growing crops, yeah. the salads, the crops that you pick every day, yeah. peas, beans. While you're cooking you nip out the door and mm -hmm. Yeah. get something to cook with exactly main crops in the market garden still mm -hmm. but it's just that for us at the moment now even when we just i'll be cooking and ask james to go out and get something it's a little it's not that far but it's no. <laughs> you know yeah. it's much it would make much more sense if something that you quickly need herbs salads fresh veg yeah um come from closer to the house of course so our big project yeah starting i guess over the next month or so if we can before the first snow comes mm -hmm. moving into spring and hopefully getting this area here cultivated again as a yeah. kitchen garden by by may or june when we'll start to put transplants out there's some fencing to fix we'll need to move the things to the main new tree nursery yeah. so we'll need to prepare make that the tree nursery. tree nursery there's always a domino effect of things <laughs> when you want to do a job but yeah so they need to come out and then it'll be about just cutting plenty of things down um reshaping making, the beds again yeah yeah probably. exactly i mean it's um, not it's not a massive area it no. was it was a much bigger garden yeah. when i first made it in 2012 um it went right up to the cherry tree the big tree that's not in leaf anymore that was the furthest point of the garden that's north up in that direction and we used to keep our ducks up at the top there and we had a really nice little duck system where the ducks would swim in a bath and add the manure to the water and we had a little pipe which would flood a swale and that would then fertigate the garden. It was all really quite ingenious. Um, but 
just became something that we didn't need because of the focus moving from this garden to the market garden. So right now where we're standing is pretty much the oh. limit. When we got rid of the ducks in about 2017, 18, we planted this top area of the original kitchen garden to a small forest garden. So we've got a nice plum tree and there's aronia berry and honey berry and all sorts here. So we won't be changing that. There won't be any veg beds up here. Um, we're thinking about putting in a dead hedge or fence yeah, I think here. We'll, so we just probably run a dead hedge along here and that will really separate the kind of, yeah, the forest garden and these, this line of fruit bushes that used to be in this kitchen garden. Um, that will be in the kind of, yeah, forest garden area and then this will be the veg beds. Mm -hmm. We can bring, for example, our poultry into the forest garden area, the kind of perennials and the things that can handle that and not let them in <laughs> to our kind of, yeah, much more tender, precious crops that they'll really enjoy eating themselves. So yeah, having a boundary here will really work and we want to make it into a dead hedge. So we've got plenty of brash. We've got to cut this whole hedge as well here. So we're going to have a lot of material. Um, so yeah, so that'll be going up. I'm sure we'll document that. These aren't self-seeded birches that you can see here. This, this is a few beds of tree nursery that we put in last year. A friend of ours donated uh, a whole bunch of native trees to us um, and we planted a huge amount of them out over the last year or so uh, but this is the last of them so they'll be going out um, anytime between now and the beginning of spring next year we've also got a couple of beds of fruit bush cuttings that we made um, nearly two years ago we've got a good hundred or so black currant here and about 80 or so um, Aliagnus umbellata or autumn olive cuttings um, plus some raspberries and a few elderberries and chestnut. One, two, three, four beds of um, young trees. And these trees are going to go out very soon since dormancy is upon us. That means these beds will be freed up and can be put back into production for vegetables for the house. Our mind about this patch of black currants. This is like the original black currants yeah. here, the patch that you took all the cuttings from for all the delicious black currants around the farm. We don't necessarily need them anymore uh, here because we've got them all over the farm now from taking cuttings. So it's quite a large part of this garden. So we haven't really made up our mind about what we're going to do with this patch here. We've got the beds here, but whether we'll have other beds here or another section for something or we just leave we just cut them back let them regrow because they're quite overgrown full of nettles is the only problem we've got a huge amount of yeah. black currants like you said we've been taking yeah. cuttings every year propagating hundreds at times which we're all going to be plant which we're going to be planting out so whereas this could be this is you know gets a lot of sunlight yeah. here a lot of protection from yeah. the wind yeah. could be a really good bed for veggies if we can get the black currants out you know it's they're, they're quite old plants now it might be better to let the young cuttings and plants and the genetics from these yeah. carry on and give much better fruit than these old shrubs they've passed on to the rest of the farm exactly so they've lived out there Oren has discovered <laughs> that we've got a small pond in the garden so this was a small wildlife pond that I put in here in about 2014, made from an old tractor tire. We dug a hole in the ground and used the tire to kind of define the shape of the pond and then lined the tire with pond liner and put some rocks around it. Um, so it was great for attracting frogs and then the ducks ended up using it quite a bit. Not sure whether we'll keep that. As far as I remember, this was a chicken run at some point, or was that the chicken run? No, that was the chicken run. Yeah, these tall fences, which is now our road that kind of takes us through the middle of the farm. That was a chicken run. This oh, was yeah, veg this beds. Is always veg beds. Yeah, you can see the raised beds here. Yeah. 
We sold oats. We did, Our first yeah. year together. Our first summer together, Rosa and I sold, sold some oats I in here. I came with a bag of oats. You did. <laughs> it's like an old rural fairy tale yeah. or something. She came with a bag of oats. So yeah, these were where Rosa is standing, were some raised beds. I think we'll just pull out the wood from them and uh, I mean, we've got a lot of weeding to do. I think bringing in some tarps, Yeah. bringing in the chickens. Yeah, yeah. We actually did that because we were planning on doing this <laughs> this year. Uh, um, just didn't get round to it uh, for various reasons, but we did put the chickens in here. They wait a minute, wait a minute. We were, we were actually planning on doing this the year before that, because remember when we brought the goats in here? Remember our vlog <laughs> where we decided to try and bring the goats in to clean it up? Yeah. And that didn't really work because they escaped through the fence here. So anyway, just, just to say, we have, we have kind of tried to attempt this a few times. This is definitely the time though, because we really are dedicated to, um, yeah, really bringing a lot of our production back to close to the home and for the home next year yeah uh, yeah definitely going to be doing this um, but the point being yes we have cleared this a number of times uh, not completely but we've put animals in to start the process so we'll probably do that again it does work well the chickens probably did a better job than the goats did when we tried the goats in here uh, but yes yeah, so we'll get them to clear it a bit we'll take the kind of raised beds apart uh, I think and we'll put a tarp down but I think by you know as long as we leave enough space to maintain pathways uh, in between the beds, just covering the beds in plenty of mulch. It should... I know we've got some willow herb in here, which will probably still push no, through that, but... It's just a combination of mm -hmm. bringing the chickens in, letting them do a bit, and then over winter we'll put down the tarps yep. so that when the temperatures rise in spring, mm -hmm. um, the tarps do a good job at killing off a lot of the weeds and grasses in the soil. That will allow us to see the lay of the land again, the shape of the beds that once were here. Yeah. Removing all the, the young trees to plant around the whole farm will of course disturb the soil and kind of aid in, in discovering where, what, what the beds look like and how to reshape them. We're basically going to create a big blank canvas and then we're going to bring in a bunch of compost. Yeah. Bokashi mulch. Create our no dig beds. Yeah, we've got cardboard left. Well, we've got plenty of cardboard yeah. collected. I mean, the soil in this garden will be great because, yeah. again, this was the original garden. Yeah. These were all no dig beds. Yeah. Um, nearly 10 years ago, we made beds here by uh, doing lasagna gardening, putting down cardboard, layering up different um, types of organic matter, and planting through that. So the soil is, is going to be really good here. Mm -hmm. All right, so that gives you guys an idea of what we've got planned for next year. Yeah, um, excited. Very excited. Yeah. I just hope we've got the time to do all of this. Of course we do. <laughs> so that's our plans for the kitchen garden. I was going to say new kitchen garden just then, but <laughs> old it's... Old kitchen garden. Yeah, reinventing the old yeah. kitchen garden. We're going back in time. Yes, but, you know, next level. So next level. Gonna, yeah, be Whatever evolved. that means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so that's the plans for the kitchen garden. Yep. What about the new tree nursery? just heading over to where we're going to be building the new nursery but I just thought since we're going past the polytunnel I would just go in there and uh, let's see what my mum is up to today she's working with us doing a great job in the polytunnel she's got her dog here with her hello mum so my mum has been working away for us this afternoon what are you doing mum? <laughs> strawberries yeah we planted a bed of strawberries um, just last year out in the market garden and they went crazy sending runners everywhere so my mum has been cutting off the runners and pocking them all up for us leaving them here in the polytunnel um, so that we've got a great supply of strawberries to plant fresh plants next year got a little bit of a nursery really going on in the tunnel here we've got Nepalese raspberry which is a ground cover creeping plant which produces a small edible raspberry like berry um, these are a whole lot of cape gooseberries or inca berry a very kind older gentleman who just appeared on the farm gate one day decided to bring us a whole bunch of plants from his greenhouse 
And then these are all the strawberries that my mom has been potting up. Hundreds of them. So as well as dedicating a bit of that old kitchen garden to becoming a nursery over the last couple of years, we developed a couple of nursery beds up here in the market garden just this year. This is why we're wanting to develop a dedicated nursery because we can't just keep on plonking plants in the ground here, there and everywhere. Um, it gets a bit chaotic doing that. Um, so we want to be able to devote a whole area as a tree nursery. Trees, perennial crops and shrubs is something that we're just putting way more of our time into now. Um, it's definitely a big passion of ours, the concept of designing this farm to be a food forest farm. And if you want to plant fruit trees and shrubs and other beneficial trees everywhere, then you've got to have the stock to do that. If you've got the money, you can go out and buy lots of these amazing trees. What we would recommend is starting to take as many cuttings as you can of trees that you've already invested in. And we've been buying trees here at Tap Farm for the last 10 years, different fruit trees and nitrogen fixing shrubs and nut trees. And they've got to an age now where we can really start focusing on taking cuttings whether that's hardwood or softwood cuttings or um, starting to graft. We've bought a whole bunch of rootstock, apples, plums, cherries. We're gonna take some cyan wood this winter and try grafting for the first time. I've never ever grafted in my life, but I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos and I feel it's something we're definitely capable of doing. So this is a way that we can start really getting very serious about propagating plants, taking cuttings, growing trees, and then starting to plant them around the farm, developing our multi-layer forest garden around the whole farm, rather than just having areas of forest garden here and there. The concept is, is that we want to be able to walk around the whole farm landscape um, and have multi-use, multi-species forestry all around us. Um, this is multi-strata agroforestry. Agroforestry is something that we've been focusing on for quite some time um, but we want to add in as many layers to these forest ecosystems as possible. That's why we have been in the background taking cuttings, making these kind of pop-up nurseries wherever we can. This year and into next we're going to start establishing a new nursery so that we've got a big area devoted to and the next generations of trees and shrubs and also so that we can make that into a small business. We're very interested in being able to supply some of these trees and shrubs that we've been growing now for 10 years and know that are suited for our climate here in the northeast of Scotland. There's a lot of people out there who come on the farm tours or our courses and workshops who are very interested in growing some of the similar trees that we've been experimenting with and so there's definitely a need to be able to supply trees and shrubs and different herbs to people. With that third ethic of permaculture, of return of surplus, um, taking cuttings from trees that we've been growing for years to carry on for our own needs of supplying the farm with uh, tree stock and then selling any surplus that we've made from that. Just to add another string to our very multi-stringed bow of on-farm enterprises. So where are we gonna be putting this new tree nursery? At the beginning of last year, um, during lockdown, we decided to extend the market garden. So here I am at the bottom of the market garden. And there used to be a large berm of rubble and, and waste that the previous owners of this land put there. And we had that removed and flattened. And Rosa and I spent a long time creating a new area of market garden. And um, half of this was under crops last year, mostly brassicas. And then this year we decided we weren't going to use it um, because we purposely made the veg box membership a bit smaller so we could rest some of the garden. So we had most of this under plastic tarps to stop it turning to weeds. And then we also sowed some buckwheat as a green manure, which you can see the remnants of here behind me. We harvested a lot of this buckwheat for making compost and adding to our bokashi and we also sowed it with red clover and some different grasses. And what with our plans next year being a lot more focused on producing food for the home 
Um, we won't be needing this plot for the veg box. And so we thought this is a great nursery site. It's a lovely big area, um, plenty of space to create beds for trees. Um, it's got some, it's got good aspect. It gets a lot of sunshine, but it's also got some nice shade. It's also right at the bottom of our forest garden tree rows, which we're going to be adding to these plots that we rested this year. Um, over the next few years are going to be planted up to mixed fruit trees and shrubs and other useful trees. So all the parent material for this nursery is kind of right above us here. So exciting times. I can't wait to get started on the tree nursery. This is a big passion of mine is propagating plants. Something I've been teaching myself to do over the last number of years. Um, like I said, very excited to try grafting for the first time. Um, taking our own cyan wood, that's our cuttings of the cultivars of apples and plums and cherries and grafting them onto rootstock that we've got arriving soon. Yeah, it's gonna be exciting having our own tree nursery. I think that obviously the more that we're planting trees and we've got increasing selection of different interesting trees that we're seeing, how they work and well, how well they work in this kind of uh, our climate. climate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just makes sense to yeah. be propagating them uh, either to grow more on the farm or for other people in a similar mm. um, area to be able to use on their property. So really excited about that, yeah. spreading spreading the love <laughs> of the different plants and things that yeah. can provide what we need. Yeah. So. Cool. Oh well, I think it's getting dark very quickly. It is, yeah. Short days now. Yeah. A very planning, planning heavy, uh, update Definitely, really but yeah. that's what this time of year really is you know we're just like taking stock of what happened this year what our plans are for next year it tends to be a bit lower on energy at this time of year you've kind of had quite a full-on time during the growing season mm -hmm. but it's a different type of energy kind of cerebral yeah one just projecting and learning from what went wrong what went right and just yeah, the gaps that you feel mm. that you can fill mm -hmm. in the future. So yeah, actually just feeling really positive. I feel like I actually say this every year, but I feel extra positive this year <laughs> about next year. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's vlog. I hope you're all well out there. Thank you so much for watching. A big hello to all our new subscribers as we've had quite a rush of subscribers from uh, um, get, from getting 10,000 subscribers only a couple of weeks ago we're now just below 15,000 so hello to all our new viewers I hope you're enjoying the channel I hope you're looking back through all the old vlogs um, <laughs> seeing how things have changed over the years don't forget about our patreon if you want to see more videos um, or have a chat with us you can through our patreon so check out the link above for that if this is your first time to the channel today thanks for finding us thanks for watching and please do hit subscribe because it just lets us know that you're enjoying the channel and that you want to see more videos from us both here yeah um, and until next time we'll both see you soon see ya Bye.